In this video, we're going to take a look at what happens when we try to take the square root of a number that is not a perfect square. For example, the number 3. We know that decimals are going to be involved, and um, what we're going to do in order to deal with that is instead of working with the number 3, we're going to multiply by 100 and work with the number 300. We'll be taking the square root of the number 300, which will give us one decimal place. It will bring us into the tenths place. So I need to represent the number 300, but this board is not big enough to allow me to do that. So I'm going to bring in my bigger board to work with. And so my first step is to create the number 300, 3 times 100. And that is 256 plus 32, plus 8, plus 4. This adds up to 300. And so the first step is to bring in my far left-hand coin. I'm going to slide it along the diagonal, hoping to hit um, one of the dots, which is actually a perfect square, 16 times 16. If we hadn't hit the dot, we would have had to regroup at the next level down. We did hit this diagonal, so we're good. Now I'm going to bring in my next coin and slide it until I get to the top of my square. But I know that the shape of this thing needs to be a square, and if you're not sure about that, you might want to check my earlier video on taking square roots. I can't get anything else into the spot where I need it to be to make a square. I can't get this bottom corner of the square. So I'm going to take this back off and do some regrouping. So one group of 32 becomes two groups of 16. I'll bring one of these in, slide it up to the top to start forming my square. I'll bring the other one in. Now we see we have three corners of the square. And I know where the next part of my answer needs to go. It needs to go here. I need an L-shaped gnomon. I need three pieces in this second step. Well, what that's going to require is a coin right here. I know where it needs to go. But I have nothing over there that I can bring onto the board. So I'm going to do some regrouping in order to get that to happen. The four becomes two groups of two. I'll take one of those twos and make two groups of one, which I can then put onto the board, and we have our square. Now you notice down here that I have some coins left over that aren't used. That's because the decimal representation could keep going. And if I wanted to go beyond the tenths place, then I would have to multiply by 100 again. So instead of working with 3, we worked with 300. That gives us one decimal place. If we wanted two decimal places, we would multiply by 300 again and be working with 30,000. Now, I would have to make my board longer in order to do this. And we could. It just depends on how big a board you're willing to make. But what is our answer so far? So I notice that we have 16 plus 1. We have 17. You see that on both sides. And since, as I said, this is our answer to the tenths place, 17 for us becomes 1.7. That's our approximation of the square root of 3 to one decimal place. And while we're at it, I'd like to compare this with Napier's other calculating device, which is um, Napier's Bones. And so we'll move this out of the way. Just kind of compare and contrast. So we're going to take the square root of 3 and in order to do that, we need the square root bone. Typically, we just mask off part of that, so we're only looking at the perfect squares. The square root of 3, <clears throat> or the closest, the perfect square closest to it, is going to be 1 squared, which is 1. So the first part of our answer is a 1. In order to continue, I'm going to put zeros behind the 3. This is actually not a decimal place. In fact, why don't I just continue this a ways? We use pairs of numbers when taking square roots using Napier's bones. 
So in order to move on to the next step, I take the one and I double it. So that tells me to take a two rod. That's the point of these two columns here. I could say, what's the double of one? It's two. This is set up so that you don't need to know your multiplication facts at all. You can even find your times two facts back here. So we now need to find the closest result, the closest row to 200. And we're going to find that um, here. In the seven row, we get nine in the ones place, eight in the tens place, and one in the hundreds place, 189. Okay, and I do have a video on this as well, if you'd like more explanation. But this was in the seven row, so that's the next part of our answer. Double a seven and we get 14. So the next thing that we're going to have to place in front of the square root rod is a 14. Except I'm not allowed to put two rods in there because of place value. I can't squeeze two rods in there. So what we need to do is actually a carry. The 4 is go in here, going to go in here, but the 2 plus 1 gives us 3. We just did a carry. 2 plus 1 more gives us 3. So we do our subtraction. This leaves us with an 11. We bring down the next two zeros, and now we're looking for the closest thing that we can get to 1100 without going over. And that's going to be here. We have a 9 in the 1's place, a 2 in the 10's place, and then 1 plus 9 is 10. And that was in the 3's place. Notice we now have 1.73. Our decimal is going to go right there, so we're already to the 100's place. Let's keep going. If we do the subtraction, we get a 71. We bring down two zeros, and we need the six rod, which goes right in front of the square root plate. And now we're searching for um, 7,100. As we go along here, well, that's already 9,000, actually 10,000. So we're right here. This is going to be 6,924. If we subtract, we're going to get 176. We could put another two zeros up here, bring those down, and continue the process. So this 6924, I found it in the twos place. That's another decimal. If we were to continue this, we would slide a four rod in here and we could keep going. So here's the square root of three to three decimal places. I think these devices have pros and cons. With this device, you absolutely need to be working off to the side in paper and pencil, and yet look at how quickly I was able to get three decimal places. Using this device, I didn't need paper and pencil. I could just move counters on the calculating device, but I was only able to get to the tenths place unless I make a very, very large um, chessboard abacus.